In the dialogue, there is the recipient and the dialogator. This week, I got started fleshing out this spooky forest area that's going to house Elephant, the baby elephant shopkeeper that I introduced you guys to in the last dialogue. I want this place to have a mysterious kind of enticing atmosphere so the player would want to explore it. So I placed a bunch of trees down to shroud the area in both shade and beams of light. After my first attempt didn't totally work out, I made a rustling leaf shader with subsurface scattering so you can see the light shining through the leaves from underneath the tree. I also added this little patch of dirt at the bottom of each tree model to soften the transition from tree to ground. I then added a density volume for this area and made the font thicker and a little bluer because it looks cool. Then I modeled this little wagon for our new shopkeeper Elephant as her shop's base of operations. I got the shop functionality implemented this week so you can actually buy upgrades, have a little cinematic interaction with Ellie, and use the ability that you bought. What that does mean though is F's in the chat for my cool spotlight shop design where it would go from item to item, that was cool. But then for fun at some point, I made this visual effect that spawns a cloud of quote unquote fireflies, aka yellow glowy dots. But the effect is pretty convincing and matches the game's art style pretty well. I put a couple clouds of fireflies around the hub world and Ellie's forest shop just to add some interest and magic to the area. Okay, little problem though. With all the new models I've been adding to the scene, my game has started to be a bit laggy. I decided it's time to re-implement the LOD or level of detail system so I can make lower poly versions of my models and Unity will show you the worst version of the model if you're far enough away. This means less polygons on the screen to render, which means less lag. Since I, uh, since I have all my reusable props saved as prefabs, I went back into Blender and made LOD0, LOD1, and LOD2 versions of every single prefab 3D model that I had, so LOD1 and LOD2 got lower and lower poly from LOD0. Then I set up a LOD group object in their prefabs, and voila, we have more frames. The downside to this is that light map baking now takes two or three times longer than it used to because it has to bake light maps for each level of detail. Still, Still bakes only take 15 to 20 minutes now, so it's not bad at all. Like I talked about in last week's devlog, this week I also got to implementing yarn spinner so I can write yarn files for dialog, which lets me call commands from inside dialog so I can trigger cutscene events, emotive animations, and also have a way for the player to respond to dialog. Right now I decided to just have a positive and negative button and phrase all questions directed at Bun in a way where you can infer what the positive and negative options mean. For example, if Ellie says, oh nice choice, so you want to buy this item? The player understands contextually you're being asked whether you want to confirm the purchase, the positive option, or back out, the negative option. So now it's pretty simple for me to open up a yarn file and write some dialogue. Over time, I'm sure I'll start implementing more commands to trigger more in-game events, which will give me more ideas for cool dialogue stuff I can do. That's a lot of more. I loved seeing all of your comments on Devlog 8 when I asked about ideas for the game's story, and it really inspired me to start narrowing in on Bun's journey. I started storyboarding a cutscene in my notebook as a simple introduction to the world and characters that's very simple, but I think effective. The game will start with Bun laying down on the cold marble, waking up slowly to see a shadowy hatted figure standing over him. Bun freaks out a bit, the hatted man says something about who he is and what he's doing there, then poofs out in a cloud of smoke, leaving Bun clueless and the player curious. Like George. I honestly think I'm just going to keep adding vague, open-ended bits of story and guidance uh, to keep the game from giving the player too much direction, but rather allowing your story of playing the game to unfold. I'm not sure how good of an idea this is, but I'm going to roll with it for now and we'll see how things turn out. I put a couple cutscene volumes down in my scene and blocked out the camera angles that I sketched in my notebook in a Cinemachine track on the Unity timeline. This would serve as a starting point for me to start working on the cutscenes. I don't really know how to tackle bespoke cutscene animations yet, so that'll be its own adventure, but for now this is good enough. I did the same for the portal building, but added a signal emitter in the timeline so I could turn on the first portal as part of the cutscene. Very cool. I have an idea of the animation that I'll do for that cutscene too, involving the hatted man again, but I'm going to keep it to myself and think about it for a little while longer. 
That was a really productive week. If you're new here, consider subscribing to keep up with the development of Bun, which you can wishlist on Steam right now, only if you want to though. Thanks for watching, love you guys, and I will talk to you in about a week. Peace.